Hello all, Project Wargaming here with a update on some other projects that I've been working on. So, messing around with uh, 2mm American Civil War, and of course you really need some fields, and you of course need some snake rail fence, I think, when you play the American Civil War. So, been messing around with how best to represent this on the board besides just throwing a piece of felt down or some other piece of cloth. Um, particularly at this scale, I think it's... It's hard to, to get things to kind of look right, I guess. Um, so what I've been messing around with is actually uh, modeling entire fields. So at this scale, usually, you know, an, an inch is going to represent 100 yards, 150 yards, something along those lines. So uh, I've been kind of messing around with this idea. So one of the other things that I wanted to do was, you know, be able to even set it on there and not have to worry about it. Uh, you know, all helter skelter, that sort of thing. Um, and I think when you move your two millimeter troops across, like it's good to be able to just set them someplace and not have to move the terrain at all. So uh, I've been messing around with a couple different things. So this is a field that I've modeled up with uh, actual some rows in it. And then I just use this little squeeze bottle with some wood glue in there. Got this guy off of Amazon and then put the lines on there and then of course flocked it. So you can see here the, uh, the edges and you can see kind of the snake rail fence there effect. Um, looks really good I think with a wash around the corners it makes that fence uh, stick out uh, definitely more. Um, but uh, it's kind of the first go. I have multiple sizes of this. This is, I think, uh, 50 by 50. And then I have like up to 120 by 120. I'm going to print those off tonight and give those a try. And then I have some that are at angles and some with rows and some without rows. Um, because the other thing I've done is I've gone in and tried to uh, put some static grass on them to make it look like a, a wheat field. I think what I might do here is not run the wheat in the future from edge to edge. Um but allow it to just um, uh, have a, a little bit of a, a line around the edge because obviously wheat didn't, the farmer didn't till right up against the uh, the fence itself. And it'll make the, scent, the fence stand out a little bit more. This was just kind of my first go at just putting some, some regular old uh, flocking in there just to make it look like it's, you know, some kind of thing. Um, pasture field. These are fairly flexible. Uh, you know, they're not going to be able to put this on a hillside and like flex it, but I think you can also, you know, set them beside each other and it, and it really doesn't look that horrible. I have done some experiments with cutting out the edges of these and, uh, trying to glue them together to give you different shapes. Not quite there yet. Uh, I did this experiment earlier with a much longer, static grass to see if I could maybe get a cornfield kind of look. Not there yet, I don't think. Not super happy about that. I have a couple other ideas on how to represent cornfield. Um, I have the six millicorn, millimeter cornfield that I've made and I think that works pretty well, but when you scale that stuff down to two millimeters, it just flakes off because there's not enough uh, grippiness there. So. I got a couple ideas. I don't know if I'm going to be super happy with it, but trying to get, you know, tall rows uh, to be represented there is is pretty much key. So we'll see. We'll see. I'll keep messing around with it. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's that's what I've been working on. Um, kind of fun just to mess around with it. I'm going to do some straight rail fence as well. And then with that straight rail fence, I'm going to actually probably mess around with... Uh, putting some um, ballast or some rocks, some gravel around the edge to make that into a stone, stone fence. So that's it. That's what I've been working on. We'll talk to you later.